All right, uh, welcome everyone. So uh, today's, this week's Torah portion is called Emor. And why are we studying the Torah portions again? Why are we studying the Torah, why? Because this is God's instructions for us, amen? And if we want to know how to be his people, how to be his holy people, we need to study his instruction. We need to study his word. And that's what we do every week, every day. We learn about the things of God in our lives. So if you're new to the channel, again, we are a Messianic congregation. We we uh, all, we both we meet in uh, Paramount, formerly Hershey Center, and also our broad our services are broadcasted via Zoom. So anywhere in the world, you can join us, and uh, the Zoom credentials are there. And uh, and our YouTube channel, if you miss any of our speaking, and if you go to the next slide, if you uh, know want to know more about why we we need to go back to our Jewish roots, this book will help you. Um, uh, uh, on the path of uh, understanding the truth of God's word. Amen. So uh, again, our Torah portion is called Emor. And in the Torah portion of Emor, there are three main sections relating to holiness. It's all about holiness. God is teaching us about how to be a holy people. So the very first section is about the Kohen, the, the, Kohen, the priest, and the holiness standards and about the priesthood. And, and who are we? We are these priests to the nations. And uh, it's important for us to understand the holiness uh, of the priesthood. And then uh, the second part of the uh, Torah portion is Leviticus chapter 23, talking about the holy days. God has a holy day. God has a set aside day for, uh, for his people. And if we are part of God's people, then we should be celebrating these holy days with him. And then finally, he's talking about the third part. It's about the holy place. It's about the holy, the holy place, which is composed of when we enter the holy place, where we find the menorah, the table of showbread, and of course, the incense altar. And all of that is connected to our spiritual growth. So, say so more. Uh, he's talking about uh, holiness in First Peter. We read this last week. First Peter chapter one. Verse 15, it says, on the contrary, following the Holy One who is called you be to become holy yourselves and in your entire way of life, since the Tanakh says you are to be holy because I am holy. So, uh, so it is important because many today, Yeshua came to, to be the Holy One, our, our atonement, so we can continue to live uh, um, holy life, but many think that you know that uh, Yeshua died, so therefore we can do whatever you want. So we we know that's not true. First Peter, Ephesians chapter one verse four, Paul says, "In the Messiah, He chose us in love before the creation of the universe to be holy and without defect in His presence." So just as He chose us before the foundation of the world, He is calling us to live holy lives. Amen. And we cannot do away without obeying. You know, how can we be holy people if we don't know what we need? That's why it's important for us to uh, to uh, study His Word, Amen. So, uh, if you remember, uh, this is we are what month are we are in in the Hebrew calendar? We are in the what? The month of. Ayar, say Ayar. Ayar is the month after the uh, Nisan. So in the month of Ayar, there is the, the idea of the Pesach, say that Pesach, Shani, the second Pesach. And that actually happened yesterday, is uh, the 14th day of Ayar. And uh, really, the Pesach Shani is uh, which, which fell on me uh, today. Uh, yesterday is uh, the second piece. Uh, it's, this is the only piece, that's the only piece where God, uh, which is the piece of redemption, where Hashem, where God allowed the second piece. Uh, right? There's no other piece that if you miss it, you miss it. But here, God said, okay, if you miss it, and uh, he's giving you a second chance. So the so the lesson we learned, the number one lesson in Peshach Shani is, it's a gift of a second chance. Say that it's a gift of a second chance. It's a gift of missed opportunity that God will give you. Say that God 
will give me a second chance, right? But there's a second blessing that gives you a chance only if you care enough to ask for it. If, if you really want it, because let's imagine the scenario here, you know, you 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 cannot participate in the Seder for whatever reason, maybe you were exposed to a dead body, right? During the, during the temple period, or you have to travel and you cannot uh, celebrate Pesach because of your work. So, but in the Jewish writing, we learned that, that, you know, when, uh, it, uh, b because the, the descendants of, of Joseph, they took parents, remember they took the bones of Joseph from Egypt, so the, so there were people that took turns to carry the the dead body of Joseph. So they were exposed to a dead body. So therefore, they were not able to participate. And also, we remember when uh, Nabob and Abihu died, there were several men, uh, descendants of Aaron, who came and said, "You know, uh, you know, we we are uh, we are unclean. We are not able to participate." So, so here you notice that, you know, uh, on those conditions. On those conditions, they, it was legitimate reason. They, you know, they they were doing a sacrifice in behalf of uh, a loved one, and yet because of it, uh, they were not able to participate. So that so then they what they did notice that in verse seven, well, verse six, there was a certain man who were unclean by the dead body of a man, so they could not keep the Passover on that day. So. They came before Moses and before Aaron that day. So they said on verse 7, he said to them, we are unclean by the dead body of a man. Wherefore, are we, be, are, we be, are, are we to be kept back so as not to bring the offering of the Lord in its appointed season among the children of Israel? So they came to Moses because they're, they're, they're concerned. They said, how is it fair for us? You know, we, we, we had to sacrifice Okay, why are we being excluded? And then and then they said, Moses said to them, Stay here that I may hear what the Lord commanded concerning you. So, so uh Moses had to inquire of God, and God said to him, and the Lord said to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or on your generation shall be unclean for reason of a dead body, or, or because of a journey afar off, yet you shall keep the Passover unto the Lord on the second month on the 14th day at dusk. They shall keep it and they shall eat with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So, so, so what, did, what did God say? God said, you are able, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you uh, the, the second Pesach, which is called Pesach Shani, um, so that uh, um, you can celebrate the Pesach because uh, the following month. So it's amazing because, like I said, this is all, the only commandment, the only the only piece uh, that God gave people the second chance. And, and it's interesting, the, the question is, why did not God give this command earlier? Um, you see, God could have given it, but because he, he, he only gave it because, why? Because people asked for it. Say, people asked, that's why he said, if you ask not, you get not. Amen? So because the people wanted it. Amen. Some people, they say, you know what? I'm excused. I'm excused from doing, the, I'm doing this commandment. So why even bother? But for these people, it meant so much to them. Amen? Are you still here? So it meant so much to them to be able to serve God. And because they are not able, they come to God, God, why am I not able to serve you just because I sacrificed for a dead body, right? Are you still here? So, so God honored them. Why? Because they wanted it. They wanted to be part of it. And God said, you know what? Because they asked it. Because they asked it, we shall give it to them. And, and, and the, the, that's the, the, the concept of Pesach Shein, the second Pesach. The truth is, Hashem always will give you uh, what you truly want in life. It's the same in the spiritual world. I'm not referring to the physical, you know, uh, material things that you want in your life. But if you want something in your life, like I, like Brother Edwin and Sister Aplana, they did pray that God will, will, will reveal themselves in a mighty way in their lives. 
And that's a spiritual blessing that you want. You want to know God more. Why? Why? Because you want to serve him more. So, so God said, you know, you ask it, therefore you will receive it. Amen. Yes. So we 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 ask. We we ask. Uh because yes. why? Because God wants to reveal himself to us. Amen. It is it is in God's plan, God's will that He will reveal Himself to you and I. Amen. But uh, uh, he will not do that unless we want it. Do you want it today? Amen. All of us, we want to know more about God. Amen. So we can yeah. serve him more. So uh, so here is an example of God uh, granting them. It starts with truly caring about doing it. So in well, the next slide, in Parsha and more, it's also where we read about the counting of the Omer. So, so we've been doing this uh, uh, we've been doing this now for this is the uh, tomorrow tonight is the uh, the the 30th, the 28th, the 29th day, right? The 29th day tomorrow night. And uh, here's the command uh, uh, of the uh, the counting of the Omer for years. During the temple times, there was an argument by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So the Pharisees and Sadducees they were arguing. Remember Yeshua. Uh, had issues on both, right? Uh, but uh, Yeshua was more leaning towards the Pharisaical point of view, right? You remember the Sadducees? The Sadducees, they were the sect that only believe in the Word of God. They are the Word of God only. And um, because they are the Word of God only, uh, they did not uh, remember the question whether or not there's a resurrection from the dead, right? And Yeshua said, of course. God, uh, you know, God is not the God of the dead. He, he said, you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Pharisaical, they follow the written and the oral Torah, and uh, the, so so what so what's the, what's the issue here? So in during the counting of the Omer, the Sadducees say that the start of the counting of the Omer is on the Shabbat after, uh, so which is for them, they said it's the, the, the regular Shabbat. So if 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 uh, Passover fell on a Thursday, for example, um, then. You know, they don't start counting until, or if it's start, uh, Monday, they don't count until the Shabbat, after the Shabbat, which is the Sunday. But the uh, the Pharisees, they said the, the counting starts on Nisan 16, which is the, the they consider the, the, the Passover, which is the piece of unleavened bread as the, the Shabbat after. So so uh, we know that uh, the, the majority, of course, they start counting on the 16th of Nisan, which they consider the Shabbat of uh, Passover or the count the, the piece of unleavened bread as a, a regular uh, as a Shabbat. And then we start counting on the, the 16th of Nisan. So this year, like I said, it was, it was, it was a double Shabbat. That's why we started counting on Saturday instead of Friday. So anyway, so, um, so the question is, why did the Torah just not instead of uh, all this confusion, why did the Torah just not say, you know, start counting on the 16th of Nisan to avoid the confusion? So so, so to understand this uh, idea is we need to go to the next slide. We need to understand the concept of the difference between Shabbat and Ayyam Tav. Say that Ayyam Tav. Ayyam Tav in English, we can translate that as holy days. It literally it means a uh, good day, but uh, but Yom Tov, the holy day, what's the difference between a holy day and a Shabbat? So the, so the, the, the number one, well, there's two different, of course, the Shabbat. In Shabbat, we are not allowed to do any work. Are you still here? On the Yom Tov, you can do work associated with a Yom Tov. For example, um, you, you, want to, uh, you want to cook for, for the Yom Tov. In Shabbat, you have to do your cooking before the Shabbat. On a Yom Tov, you can actually cook. So that's that's one major difference. And the second, the second major difference, the more important difference is the holiness. Say the holiness of Shabbat is not dependent on us. Are you seeing there? Let me holiness explain that. Shabbat, not dependent so it, on us. let's say let's imagine, for example, that there's not even one Jew in the world, not even one believer in Yeshua, when the seventh day comes. The holiness of Shabbat will come. Are you silly? Why? Because the holiness of Shabbat is totally independent of you and I. Amen. Why? Because the holiness of Shabbat 
is dependent on who? On God. Amen? God is the one who made that day holy. That's why, if you notice, the prayer in Shabbat is different. It says, Baruch Atta Adonai, blessed are you, Lord God, the creator of the universe, who has made the Shabbat holy. Are you still here? But in the regular prayer, we say, Baruch Atta Adonai, blessed are you, Lord God, uh, who has sanctified us. You have set it as part so that we can make the Yom Tov, the, the holy, the peace holy. In other words, the holiness of the, 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 the peace is, is we have an input on it. And let me explain that. In Shabbat, or Shabbat is totally by God's grace. Amen. The holiness of Shabbat will fall regardless if there is, if there is a person that believes in God or not. God's holiness will fall. Am I still here? So Amen. with that understanding, so that's why the Yom Tov is different because it's dependent, it's not dependent also on an astronomical sign. Say that. Meaning, you know, when the, the changing of the moon. Remember that, that the calendar is determined by who? The calendar is determined by the movement of the moon and the stars, right? But who declares the month. Who declares the month? In, in the temple times, it was the Sanhedrin. Say that it was the Sanhedrin. Sanhedrin. Let's just see, for example, the Sanhedrin made a mistake, right? When they're looking at uh, the witnesses, it was cloudy. They, they did not see the crescent moon, right? So they were waiting, waiting, and then finally, the following day, say that the following day, they see what the crescent moon, and they said to the Sanhedrin, we saw it. And then he declares a new moon one day after. I still here. I still here. Let's say yeah. it was a Nissan. Instead of declaring it on Nissan one, he declares it on Nissan two. So therefore, on that year, the pa the, the Passover will be celebrated. Pesach will be celebrated on the fifteenth of Nissan instead of the fourteenth. I still here. Why? Yeah. Because the Sanhedrin declared it one day later. Right? Yeah. So, so that year, see that that year the peace mm. will go. Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah. I still hear. So the Yom Tov yeah, is, yeah. is dependent on nothing that happened. I see. I mean, I will cut it. It's 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 based it's on okay, man's declaration. I still hear. If they made a mistake for that month, that year, they will have it's to follow. Are you still here? So, so, uh, so, so, what's interesting is, uh, so we, now that we understand that, we, yeah, we understand that the holiness down, noise, yeah. of rush to death, say that the holiness of rush to death is dependent on the sun heaven. Are you still here? So, bless, uh, so the bless you. Is, uh, you bless you. you. How do we know? When the holidays, uh, so the Sanhedrin, uh, when they, when they saw, they, 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 they were reading the, the, uh, the season and they understood that the temple will not will be destroyed. They, 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 they had a foresight. God gave them the revelation. So what did the Sanhedrin do? So the Sanhedrin, why are you doing uh, before this? Before the destruction of the temple, they started to, to calculate all the Rosh Kudesh. Remember, the, the Rosh Kudesh determines the holy days, right? That's why, uh, like I told you, uh, in the millennial reign of the Messiah for eternity, Did I there, are two, there are two that will remain forever. One, one, one is what? Rosh Kudesh. And the second one is what? Shabbat, right? Why? Because the, the rush Give us a puna. The puna will like, yeah. See that the rush to death, the, the zoom will determine when the point is. Okay. I see it. So that so so God entrusted uh, the the rush to death it's... to man. He said, man, you determine. I gave you the guidelines, and you see the present moon. It's for Malate. Aja. So they started to calculate all the, the, the rush conditions for 6,000 years, until the year 6,000. No, it's not for you. So and what is that? Mean? It's not for you. You have already your white medicine, okay? 
because they knew say they knew that the messiah will, will come and reestablish the temple amen i still here so um so so uh, we we already have every month now it's already calculated they're following the calculation that was done uh 2000 uh 2300 years ago amen i still here it's the same calculation so that so the holiness of Shabbat is totally independent of our input. However, the Yom Tov, the holiness and the determination of the the feast is is dependent on us. It, it's like God, it's like a, a parent said to his uh, child and said, "Okay, here's here's a coloring picture. I've been trusting you to to color it the way you want it." So. You know, so uh, the parent has uh, allowed the child to do whatever he wants on that painting, right? So, uh, so the same way, God gave the Sanhedrin determination based on man. In this case, the Sanhedrin declaring the coming of the new man as an example. Like I said, if the Sanhedrin made a mistake, we will still have to follow through. So the holiness of Rosh Kadesh depends on the Sanhedrin, which in turn is representing the nation of Israel and uh, and so on and so forth. So, um, so it's very important distinction because if you'll notice, there's a slight difference. Like I said, in the blessing of Shabbat, we say, blessed are you, Lord, the king of the universe who sanctified the Shabbat. Whereas on a Yom Tov, we say, blessed are you, Lord, the king of the universe who sanctified us to be able to sanctify the time. So the holiness of a young thought depends on the holiness of Shabbat. So, so with that, what we're really saying is, it 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 uh, the Shabbat is really a there's um uh the, the Shabbat is a common is to to re, to remind us. Uh, like I said, there's nothing to do with the Jewish people when God created the first Shabbat. There was no Jewish person. Are you still here? You know, there was just man, there was just Adam, right? So when he created the Shabbat, go to the next slide. I think I have a slide there. Oh no, go back. So so we understand that uh, there was no Jewish Jewish people. God separated uh, the, the he created the world in six days, he rested on the Shabbat. So he commemorates the creation. When God created the world, there was no Jew, there was no Jewish people. The Shabbat has nothing to do. Uh, uh, the Shabbos has nothing to do with uh, Hashem's interaction with me, and as a result, Shabbat is not sanctified by my action. It's an automatic that Shabbat goes, does not depend on my needs like cooking, because Shabbat represents the idea that it is transcendent, and that is why Shabbat is described as a gift. See, it's a gift of God that He gave us. Well, sorry, sorry, but uh, yeah. you, you mentioned that the uh, Sanhedrin created the calendar for 6,000 years. Until 6,000 years, yeah. Because they expect that uh, after 6,000 years, the Messiah will come. Yes. Now, we are in the year 573. Yes. Does it mean that uh, the Messiah will come? The difference between 6,000 and 573 is 217 years. No. You, and you know why? That's a very good question. And, and the people in the audience, the reason why is because remember when does the when does the day start? In the sundown. evening, sundown. So we are we are literally, if you calculate today, we are at 658 in the evening, meaning the, 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 the Shabbat will come. The Shabbat will come in if it's the, if the Shabbat is at seven o'clock, the Shabbat will come in 2030. Say that in 2030. That means 2030 will usher in the new millennial reign. I still here. 2030. 2030. If you, you, you divide 1,000 by 24 hours, 
Right? You will get every hour there is a total number of years. And then when you calculate that, you will arrive at, we are today, 57, 83, as you said. In the Shabbat calendar, we are at 6.58 in the evening. That means, say that that means a few more minutes, we will be hitting the millennial moon. So in my calculation, I, I, I posted it in one of my teaching, it fell on at seven o'clock in the evening, which is Shabbat. Usually Jerusalem is 12 hours, 12 hours. If it's Shabbat at seven, it's at 20, say that year 20, 30. Year 2030 is when the Shabbat will hit. The new the, the, the Shabbat will hit. Amen. Seven years. Well, we are we are we are, we are now in the, the seven year, the last week of the prophecy of Daniel. So the, this generation. Yes, this we are the generation where we will hit the Shabbat. Hallelujah. Oh. Amen. Are you still here? <laughs> you did it. So that young dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so what's interesting is because the Shabbat, the whole idea of Shabbat is it comes because of what? Because of God's grace. Are you still here? We have nothing to do with it. Mankind has nothing to do with it. And why is Pesach connected to Shabbat? Why? Because remember, uh, if you remember the prophecy of uh, Abraham that he said, your, your descendants will be enslaved for 400 years, right? And we know by by historical account, by the timetable, that the Jewish people was in Egypt for only 210 years. Say that they're only in Egypt for 210 years. Say that 210 years. So why is that? Why is that? Why? Because in the Jewish writing, it says that the, the, the Jewish people, when they were in, in Egypt, they reached the 49th level of at cleanliness. In other words, if you reach the 50th level, that is the end of you. There is no more hope for you. So God had to take them right away. So, so the redemption from Egypt was because of God, say, because of God's grace. Even though you say, okay, they participated in the in the plague, in the last 10 plague, but it's only because of God's grace. That they're able to escape. That's why they didn't have time. In other words, if they waited 18 more minutes to let the go rise, they would have reached the 50th level and, and all of them would have would have not been saved. So it was a hurry. That's why they left they, they left in a hurry. See that? They left in a hurry. Why? Because had they stayed 18 more minutes in Egypt, they would have reached the 50th level, whatever that level is. Amen. Are you still here? So Pesach. The same with our redemption is totally a gift of God. See that? It's a total gift of God. And we understand that because we know that there is, you know, salvation has nothing to do with us, right? That's why it, even when we when we when we do the, the 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 Seder, the name of Moses, we go back to the story of Exodus, but Moses' name is only mentioned once. Why? Because God is wanting to be emphasized. That it was that Moses that delivered you. Amen. You're still here. Salvation, redemption can only come through Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Are you still here? So uh so we so that's why we start counting on, on Pesach. So so uh so here you go next slide. So the idea of the Omer, the idea the uh, the Omer is it takes one step further, the counting of the Omer as we have said it creates a linkage between um, the, the holiday of Pesach, which is our redemption, which is freedom, to Shabbat, which is the giving of the Torah, the holiday of giving the Torah. It it joins them together in a holiday. So the Ramban actually says it took 49 days for the Omer, the kind, uh, it's like a long holiday, joining the two holidays. That, that, why is that important? Because the Torah is communicating to us that the idea of freedom is not the value in itself. In other words, God did not set us free. Remember when they were in Egypt? What is one thing that 
they didn't have time for, right? They didn't have time to serve God. Why? Because they were working as slaves for seven days a week. Say that, seven days a week. Pharaoh did not give them a day off. That's why I remember when Moses was negotiating with Pharaoh, he said, let my people go so they can come to the wilderness, come to the wilderness to come and worship me. Right? So he was taking them out so they can they can worship God. So so Pharaoh said, no way. No way. So 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 we make a mistake when we think that freedom, but we're getting freedom from something. No, freedom is defined as freedom towards something. In other words, why are you free? Why, why do you have free time? So that you can do what? You can just do whatever you know. God set us free because He was He was uh He was uh pointing us to our purpose in life. Right? Freedom to do what? Freedom is a condition that can enable you to flourish as a human being. But freedom in itself is empty vessel that does not define the content of your life. In other words, when you say, I am free, you know, free to do what, right? Like a person who just left prison, if he doesn't have a purpose on why he's, he, you know, but he leaves that prison to do what? If he's not uh, able to find a, a purpose for his life, then he will end up what? End up going back to prison. Why? Because uh, there's nothing for him to do, right? Freedom is a condition that enables you. So the counting of the Omer, it creates a linkage between freedom, say freedom, and submission to God. So the Qasab even makes a point that the, the, uh, the harvest for Pesach is barley, and barley is during those times was a low quality feed or low quality wheat that is primarily used for animal consumption. I tell you. So, um, however, forty nine days later, we harvest. There's another harvest festival. It's called Shavuot, and what is the? That's the harvest there. We it's it's wheat. And wheat is uh, high-grade quality wheat, and it's used to create bread and other products, and it's used by predominantly for human consumption. Amen? So he's saying that, you know, freedom without purpose, freedom without Torah, freedom without the word of God will lead to animal liberation, right? We, we know that. And the counting of the Omer, so, you know, let me, you know, we've been counting every day. Counting, when you count, it literally means it's a judgment, right? Because you 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 set aside one. You say one day one. So counting in this is in effect is connected to judgment. Say counting is connected to judgment. That's why that we the children of Israel was never counted. Why? They, they, they counted them indirectly. Why? Because God said, I, you know, you are not being judged. Individually, we are being judged as a nation. Amen. Who, what, what would you rather be? That judge you as a person or as a, or as a community? Amen. I'd rather be judged as part of a community or call into it. Are you still here? So when you count, you're literally setting it aside. Like day one. Right? This is day one of the, the, the counting of the Omer. So day one, we learn about the emotional attributes that we need to work on. It, you're literally judging that day. Now, day two, even though you, you separate, but day two is the idea is you are able to count day two because you have day one. So day one, day two connects one. So one plus one is two, right? So every day is a separate um, separate day, but you're connecting. You're connecting. You are refining yourself, right? Because the, the refinement the whole idea of the counting is to, to re -pre prepare us. See that God is preparing you and I. You know, he's preparing us. Why? Because we are about to go into our purpose, right? So the counting, it's counting, uh, he's preparing us. Remember we were, we were uh, I think I have a slide just, Eliana, on the next slide. We were, we were, we were preparing us, God, you know, we were a slave girl. And God is preparing us to be what? And uh, when we when we got to Mount Sinai, Exodus chapter 19, 
God was preparing us to be what? His bride, and he prepared us to be his bride and preparing us to be his priest in the nations. Amen? I still need it. So you see here that uh, uh, there's a beautiful um, in the Song of Solomon, you know, the interesting, the Song of Solomon uh, uh, during the uh, uh, I guess uh, during the time of the Messiah or after the Messiah, uh, the Jewish people, the, the sages, didn't want to include that as part of the, the Holy Books. Why? They said the, the Song of Solomon was so graphic. It's so, it's so uh, you know, it's, it's a love between uh, um, uh, uh, the king and this woman, right? But, it, but in reality, uh, Rabbi Yakiva stated, he said, no, it's an allegory of God's love to the children of Israel. So, so that's the only reason why it finally, when they saw it in that light, then the, the Song of Solomon, go back to Elian, the Song of Solomon was included as part of the, the Holy Book. So anyway, in the, in the Book of Solomon, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 4, it, it talks about this verse where it says there, take me with you so, so we can run together. So here there, it's a it's an allegory of literally God had to take us like a bag of potato, right? He had to drag us out of Egypt so that he can save us. And then the counting of the Omer is our way of, and it says, so we can run with you, run after you. So the counting of the Omer leading into uh, the, the Feast of Shavuot is our preparation because God is preparing us to be his bride, amen. I still hear even in the Seder dinner, the first three cups relates to to our our to our past, but then the fourth cup is prophetic about being the bride of the bride of the Messiah. Amen. I still hear. So God is preparing us. Why is he preparing us? Because he's preparing us to be his priest. You know the the, the mandate of the Jewish people. You know of Israel. Uh, when God called him, he said, I want you to be the light to the nation. Say that, I want you to be the light to the nation. Why? Because God is entrusting his word to you and I. Amen? So, uh, you know, if you are a covenant person, if you uh, connect yourself to Israel, your mandate has not changed. You are to be the light to the nation. So here we see here, that's why in the, in the next slide, he talks about, go to the next slide, Jesse, Eliana. So he's talking about the holy times. There's some there's a message there, Aliana. Somebody has a message. I don't know what it is. So there are holy days and holy times. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, say unto them, the appointed seasons of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Even these are my appointed appointed seasons. So the, the peace of the Lord is talking about. Uh, the, uh, the first one there, we learn about Shabbat. We learn that Shabbat uh, is the first one. It's uh, the weekly. It says there, six days you shall work to be done, but on the seventh day is a Shabbat of solemn rest, a holy convocation. You will do no manner of work. I think I have a slide there, so let's see. So the Shabbat, we learn about the different feasts, about Shabbat. The, the festival's points Toward Yeshua the Messiah. Say, say that. The, the feast and the Shabbat point to Yeshua. In Leviticus chapter 23, we said there the son, the son of the, the speak the children of Israel, you see them the Lord's appointed times. You shall proclaim as holy convocations. My appointed times are these. The biblical calendar is quite different as we learn from the lunar or the solar calendar. The, the, the as we know the it's it we follow the, the the cycle of the moon the moon disappears the moon appears so we we know which time of the year which time of the month if you see the the full moon you know it's the middle of the month uh if you see the moon missing that means we we are in the end of the month so God has a calendar his weekly Shabbat go to the next slide is uh is uh talking about uh, you know the the appointed seasons. God said that um, the festivals that God 
told us to observe every festival points towards some aspects of the Messiah. Almost all the appointed times are in fact the remembrance of some kind of redemption in Israel's past. For example, Passover, as we know, commemorates the exodus from Egypt. Just the appointed times point towards past redemption. It also points towards future redemption. So, so here, there was a question that the apostle came to him uh, when Yeshua resurrected in Acts chapter 1. It says they're, they're questioning when the second coming is coming. So look at what Yeshua said. When, when, when they therefore came together, they asked him, saying, Lord... When will you, uh, when will thou this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Look at what Yeshua said, verse 7. He said, he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. So God has an appointed time. He has an appointed season. Go to the next slide. So the, the, the first festival we said is the, is the Shabbat. So in Exodus, so the Shabbat is the uh, is six days. They said that the Shabbat alludes to um, the, the, the 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 Shabbat alludes to uh, the time when uh, you know um, when it it, uh, it alludes to the the six thousand years of mankind as we will uh, uh, enter into the rest. So here, Exodus chapter twenty talks about. In six days, Adonai made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything on it. But on the seventh day, he rested. This is why Adonai blessed the day, Shabbat, and separated it for himself. The second reason for Shabbat points towards the exodus from Egypt in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15. You are to remember that you were slaves in the land of Egypt. And Adonai, your God, brought you out from there with a strong hand, with an outstretched arm. Therefore, Adonai your God has ordered you to keep the day of Shabbat. To keep the day of Shabbat. Shabbat is a sign for us that he has set us apart, right? So you notice that the major religion has their own day, right? The Muslims, they worship on a Friday. We worship on a Shabbat, amen? So you see here that it sets us apart from all the other. Are you still here? So... Um, the Shabbat points towards something in the future. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse, verse 8, it says, So, so if you, you, you if so for if Yehoshua had given them rest, God would have spoke, spoken later of another day. So there remains a Shabbat keeping for God's people. For the one who has entered God's rest has also rested from his own works as God did for his. For his. Therefore, let us do our best. Say that let us do our best to enter that rest so that no one will fall short because of some kind of disobedience. Are you still here? So, so he's urging us that our disobedience might disqualify us from the rest. So there remains a Shabbat rest for God's people for the one who entered his rest on the Shabbat he was himself was arrested. So the sages reviewed views that the seven days of creation is a simplified blueprint of our human history. As it says in Psalm 90 verse 4, for a thousand years in your sight are like a day when it passes by according to, the, to this idea. Each of the six days corresponds to the millennial history. I see here. So the, the history of mankind, he says, is like the, 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 the day of the Shabbat, right? So, so we are entering, like, as Brother Oscar pointed out, we are entering into the Shabbat. We are minutes away from the Shabbat. I see that. I see here. We are minutes away from the Shabbat. The book of Revelation, we read this uh, uh, earlier, uh, last week, Revelation chapter 20. Next, I saw an angel coming down from heaven who are the key to the abyss and a great chain in his hand. And he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil, Satan, the adversary, and change him up for, uh, for a thousand years. So there will be a period of a thousand years. See that a thousand years, the Shabbat. It, there will be a universal Shabbat. The, the heavens and the earth will be rid of Satan for a thousand years. And then verse 4, then I saw the thrones and those seated in them received authority to judge 
and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for testifying about Yeshua and proclaiming the word of God. Also those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had received them life. They came to life and ruled with the Messiah for how long? For a thousand years. Amen. So here they talking about, you know, the uh, the, uh, the, the the coming Shabbat. The coming Shabbat. So the Lord will come. The book of Revelation that uh, Yeshua followers held similar views in First Peter, Second Peter chapter three. The Lord with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow. Say that the Lord is not slow to show about his promises as some count slowness, but patient towards you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will not come, will, will come like a thief. Talmudin, the disciples teaching about the Shabbat, a thousand years of the, of the Messianic era, my children attend to the meaning of this expression he finished in six days, implies the Lord will finish all things in 6,000 years. For a day with him is a thousand years, and he himself testifies, saying, Behold, today will be a thousand years. Therefore, the children of Israel, six days, will be a thousand years. So, the fourth festival, go next slide. The fourth festival mentioned is Shavuot. Uh, and we'll know that the Shavuot, which occurred the 50th day after the after that, the priesthood was offered. Remember, before the Torah was given, what happened in Exodus chapter 19? God told Moses to tell the children of Israel, if you know, if you if you what if you um if you accept my covenant, you will be what a kingdom of priests, say that kingdom of priests and a holy nation, right? So you see here that that in, in the Jewish writing, it says there when the Torah was given, when, when God came down and God spoke, he said that the, in, in the Jewish writing, this is the Jewish writing, this is not uh, the, the, the Bible, right? It's not in the Jewish writing, in the, in, the, in, in the Jewish writing, it says that when God spoke, there were tongues of fire, the tongues of fire, and it, and it landed on each of the people in the camp. So, it, it, God spoke in, in, in the 70 languages that were there, and tongues of fire fell. So they saw the tongues of fire. So you see that, the tongues of fire. So what, what, what's God doing then? God was commissioning, say that God was commissioning the children of Israel. Say that he was commissioning the great commission, say that the great commission, Israel, you are going to be the light of the nation. My word will go up. Say, my word will go up. Are you still here? Wow, say, wow. I love you. There you go. So what happened? So Shabbat, God gave the Torah to the people of Israel, Mount Sinai, and the Talmudin. Remember, uh, when Yeshua resurrected, he said, Tari, in Jerusalem. Say, Tari, where? Did he say go to um, Nazareth? No. Did he go to Bethlehem? No. Say stay in Jerusalem. Why? Because what would happen? The Shabbat would happen. The Holy Spirit. The Pentecost would happen. The Holy Spirit came. Wow. In Acts chapter 2, what happened? And in Shabbat, they, they too celebrated the giving of the Torah that day. God spoke the Ten Commandments. There's a, there's a significant connection because remember, I told you the miracle that happened in Acts chapter 2 also happened uh, 1,400 uh, 1, early years earlier when the Torah was given. So they saw tongues of fire. They had tongues of fire. And all of a sudden, they start speaking in many languages. They heard them praising God in, in, in many, many languages. Are you still here? So the, 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 the Hasidic rabbi, his name is Rabbi Uziel, teaches that each of the festivals celebrates both the past and the future that the festivals combine the physical joy and from the agricultural cycle, the land of Israel with a spiritual joy deprived, derived from celebrating the events of redemption. So you see here, you see here that God made them to be a kingdom of priests. So look at the next slide. So they said, I think uh, 14, slide 14 at the Eliyaram, slide 14, it says that you recall, if you recall, it says there, 
Yeah, verse 19, Moses went to God and the Lord called, Mo, called to him the mountain. You have seen what I have done to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings, brought you into myself. Verse 5. Why? Why did God have to separate them? Why? Because now they're free people. They can decide whether or not they're going to serve God. Verse 5, it says that now, therefore, if you will hearken or listen to my voice, indeed, and keep or observe or practice or do my covenant, then you will be my own treasure from among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6, you shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Wow. Look at what Yeshua said. This is John chapter 4. I, I, uh, sorry, he put that. John chapter 4. He's talking to his disciples. He was just, he was just, he just did the, the miracle of the feeding. He was speaking to this woman, this Samaritan woman. And then verse 5, don't you say, don't you have a saying? For for four months, and then the harvest. Say that for four months, and then the harvest. Look at that. Well, what I say to you, open your eyes. Say that, open your eyes. And look at the fields. They are already ripe for harvest. For one who reaps, receive his wages, and gather the fruits of eternal life. So the reaper and the sower might be glad together. For in this matter, the proverb says, one sows, another reaps, holds true. I sent you the reaper. You haven't worked for it. Others have done the hard work. And I have benefited in the world. So, so Yeshua say, open your eyes. Why? The fields are white unto harvest. Wow. So what happened? When the when the when the Talmudim and the disciples were empowered by God, say that when they were empowered by God, what season was that? What festival was that? The festival of what? Shavuot. Say that Shavuot. And Shavuot, what Shavuot. festival? Is what? Wheat, say wheat. That's why the field is white harvest. Wheat is the is so so the, the, the disciples go next. Time. The disciples were commissioned by Yeshua. Huh? John chapter 4, not sure, four months. Before your eyes, they are white already for harvest. Say that white. White for harvest. Uh, wheat is what color is wheat? Wheat is white. Amen. <laughs> wheat is white. So he's talking about. The, the harvest of the world. Remember, you know, the partial blindness of the Jewish people was, was a result of what? So that God can bring the what? God can bring the goyim, the Gentiles, into the kingdom. Amen? It's still here. So he says there, Matthew 28, Yeshua came and talked to them. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make People from all nations into what? Say that into Talmudin. Say that Talmudin. What is a Talmudin? Oscar, what is a Talmudin? A disciple. Thank you. A disciple. He said, make them a what? Did he say make them a believer? No. He said, make them a what? A disciple. What is a disciple? A learner, a one who follows his master. Say that. You have a disciple of... Of, of Yeshua, we follow who? Follows the master. Yeah? So what did Yeshua say? Make them decide, immersing them in the reality of the Father, Son, and the Ruach Kodesh. Verse 20, and teaching them. See, teaching them. Instructing them. See, I think there. Wow. Say, wow. Wow. He's teaching them, instructing them to obey. See that? To obey. To obey. Everything I have commanded you. Amen. <laughs> So what did Yeshua say? I do what I saw my father do. Amen? So Amen. what my father do, my father say, I follow. So now we follow Yeshua. He's following who? The father. So he said, everything that I commanded you and remember, I will always be with you. Yes, until the end of the show. So you will see here that we are the times of the Gentiles, say the times of the Gentiles are done, are done, are all are done. We are living now in the times when when, the, when Israel 
uh, became a nation. That's the clock. We are now in the 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 fall piece. Go to the next slide. So we are we are living in the end times. The fall piece is the end times. If you if you don't believe me, look at the book of Revelation. Uh, the, the 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 feast of the Lord are divided into three major feasts, which are all pilgrim feasts. The feast of Pesach. What is the harvest? Barley. Shavuot, which is another pilgrim festival, it's the harvest is what? It's wheat. And then finally, the feast of Sukkot. What is the harvest? It's the ingathering. It's the it's the fruits. Amen. Are you still here? So you look at the book of Revelation. Say that the book of Revelation. The what book of you Revelation. See? You will not see barley mentioned. You will not see wheat. Why? Because it is the end time. He's talking about the fall feast. So when Yeshua fulfilled the spring and the summer festival through the day, to the hour, he will fulfill the fall feast. We are living in the end times. He's there, there, the end time. If you've been following the spring feast, it's all about redemption, taking us out of bondage, taking us out of our animalistic nature. How? Through the counting of the Omer. Cleansing ourselves, preparing ourselves. Um, our calling is to be what? To be his bride, to be his priest, to the nations, to be the light, to bring the people into his kingdom. Now that we are, you know, we are doing his mandate. The mandate of Yeshua did not change when the disciples were given the, the, the great commission, go into the world uh, to teach them what? God's instruction. Say God's instruction. Say that. To teach them. What is God's instruction in, in Hebrew? Torah. Amen. Say Torah. Amen. To teach them to obey. Right? Amen. So the month of Elul, go next time. So the month of Elul actually, uh, Eliana, month of Elul ushers in the season of Teshuvah. See that season of Teshuvah. Just like we have. Uh, the counting of the Omer in uh, in spring, we also have the concept of 40 days of Teshuvah. Say that 40 days of Teshuvah, starting from Elul 1. Why? Because in Elul 1, we learn that uh, uh, God is, uh, God's presence on the earth is very strong. He said the king is in the field. The king is in the field. So God's, God is in the earth. God is walking around, looking at his bride, is he ready? Yeah, are you ready to go with me or not? So here, we see here that 30 days, uh, the Elul one is preparing us. Go to the next slide, Eliana. So the first feast in the spring is what? Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah. What is Yom Teruah? We, we, we've been saying Yom Teruah is what? Is the day of resurrection. Say that, the day of resurrection. When you hear the trumpet sound, the dead will rise first. Amen, are you still here? The dead will rise first, and those that are alive will what? Will, 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 uh, will, will go up with him. Amen? So uh, remember, uh, on the first Yom Teruah, what happened? Mankind, Adam, from dust, he became life. Amen? <laughs> so we know Yom Teruah is when the rapture will happen, the sounding of the trumpet, when we will be taken out. Go to the next slide. And then uh, the season of uh, Teshuvah is also uh, followed by Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is Judgment Day. See that Judgment Day. So Judgment Day for the enemies of God, the enemies of Israel, will face the final battle. No, the second, the final battle. Remember, there's going to be two battles. The first battle is uh, against the enemies of God, who will who will uh, transfix themselves against Israel, and God will, uh, Yeshua will land his foot on the Mount of Olives, amen, I tell you, and he will, verse 11, and I saw hope, heaven open, in Yom Kippur, what do we traditionally wear, what do we wear? We wear white clothing, I tell you, white, and we wear white, <laughs> I tell you, white, and he opened, behold, the white horse, and then who sat on him called faithful and true, the, with righteousness, he judged and make war. His eyes were like the flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written no one knew but himself. 
He was clothed in with a vesture dipped with blood and the name for the word of God. And the army, see the armies. Where is this army coming from? These are the these are the ones that will, will be taken away, which were in heaven, followed him with white horse, clothed with black, with fine linen, say white, say white. White and clean. Amen. So this is a Yom Kippur moment when, when God will come with his army. He will, he will, his army, and then out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, and with his sword would smite the nation. And he will rule them, rule them with a rod of iron, and he tread the winepress of the fierceness of the rod of, of the Almighty God. And he had on his vesture, on his thigh, the name written, King of Kings. And Lord Lord. So this is the young people moment when God will come down and fight against the enemies of Israel. So if you if you hate Israel, it, there's still time to repent. You need to love Israel. Amen? Otherwise you're fighting against God. Then the final feast, one next slide is of course the feast of Sukkot. The feast of Sukkot is, uh, is reminiscent of the end of the world. There's many scriptures there. Matthew 13, Revelation 14, and Revelation 21. And you'll see here that it's the it's the time of the in gathering. They will they will separate the what the figs from the grapes. They will separate the thorns from the thistle. Are you still here? He will separate the, the in gathering. It's gonna be the judgment day, and then we'll see that heaven will come down like the piece of of support the tabernacle when God came down. So. Uh, 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 he will separate the sheep from the wolf, the coming down of the new heaven and the new earth, as uh, mentioned in Revelation chapter 14 and Revelation chapter 21. Amen. So, uh, after 1,000 years, after a thousand years, yes, after a thousand years, when, the, when we will, when we will have the Torah in our hearts, amen. When the final battle comes, when the enemies unleash, he will not take. If it's not in your heart, you will be able to steal it. If it's in your hand, if the word of God is in your hand, he can take it from your hand. But if it's in your heart, amen. This world will never end. This world will never end. It will be a new heaven and a new earth, but it will never end. Amen. So with that, Pesach reminds us the daily counting of the Omer is to prepare us. Pesach will redeem us. The daily counting of the Omer is to prepare us to be his priest and bride. We were redeemed to bear the light of his Torah to the nation. That mandate continues with his disciples, which we are today. Amen? True gospel is to lead people to Yeshua and obedience to his Torah. Are you ready to join his army? Let us pray. Father, in the name of Cano, we thank you today, Father. We thank you that you have separated us. You have made us holy. You have made, you, you have made us your bride. You have made us your priest. And Father, we are here to, to, uh, to carry on your mandate for us to be the light of the nations. And Father, as we are, that's what we're doing today, Father. We're being the light of the nations. And I pray that each one of us, we have a witness. We have a light to shine to the world. Uh, we thank you today, Father, that uh, for for using us, even though our lights might be small, maybe a flicker, maybe maybe it's just uh, a flint. But Father, we thank you that that flint is enough to light, to illuminate, and create more light. Father, we thank you today. We thank you because we have the Ruach Hashem, the Holy Spirit, who is the teacher of truth. And may your truth be seen and heard by your people today. And set us, set your people free, Father. Set your people free. Free from the bondage of uh, tradition, free from the bondage of of uh, of uh, culture. May the, the the word, the true word of Yeshua the Messiah, His word, living word, be alive in your people today. We ask in Yeshua the Messiah, and everybody said, "Amen, amen, amen, amen." amen. amen. In the recording. Thank you, Pastor. All right.